Hello and welcome to our last harvest of the season. So this is what the red coffee cherries look like on the tree. We only pick the red ones because that is optimal ripeness and they have the, the best sugar content at this point. Here is the master picker at work. You can tell it's pretty time labor and uh, attention intensive. It's pretty detail oriented work because you only wanna get the ripe red cherries. So once the pickers pick the coffee cherries, they put them in a bag here. And then from here, we can do a couple different things. But first, I'm going to show you what we do for a naturally processed coffee. Okay, so for a naturally processed coffee, we leave the skins on. And we're going to do an extended fermentation on this one, because I know you guys love the extended fermentation. So we're gonna do an anaerobic, which means it is an environment without oxygen. So we put them, put the coffee cherries in this plastic bag. Other people will use stainless steel tanks or plastic tubs, anything that keeps air out of the environment. For such a small batch, we've found that this plastic bag works really well. So we add some water in there just to help with the environment, to help the yeast and bacteria um, transport themselves in this in environment. You can see it's just enough water to basically cover most of the coffee cherries. Pick out the leaf. Here is the activated yeast. It was about 100 grams. You can see that it's bubbling up now, but it was about 100 grams, just about that much. And then with the addition of warm water, it begins to bubble. Now we put it in with the coffee cherries and we mix it up a little bit just to help the yeast spread around in there. shake it up and then we tie it off which is what contributes to the anaerobic nature of this process so more oxygen won't get in but as that yeast and bacteria eats up the sugars in the coffee cherries it will release gas and so we can't tie it too tight because we have to leave room for that gas to escape Here are the cherries after 12 hours of fermentation. You can see they're starting to bubble, so the yeast and bacteria are doing their jobs there. The cherries still look pretty much like they did when they went in, pretty vibrant in color. You can see that deep red hue. Doing some good bubbling. After 24 hours, they're still going at it. <laughs> you can tell that the skins are starting to lose a little bit of color and the bubbles are more active. Now after two days, they're continuing to go. So you know that there's still sugars in there when the bubbles are continuing to form because the yeast is still eating the sugars. There's some yeast settled to the bottom. This is after three days of fermentation. Now after four days of fermentation, the beans have lost a lot of color. They're almost pastel. And you can see that the water has taken on kind of an opaque pink color. So now they're ready to, to drain. We cut the bag open. This wheelbarrow has holes in the bottom just for, for ease. We put them the beans in there and then rinse them with water. So right now they're pretty fragile because they've just been soaking in water for a number of days. So we just do enough of a rinse to get the extra yeast, bacteria, and residue off of them. And we bring the beans up to the drying patio. So right now they are 
pretty wet because they've been sitting in that liquid for a number of days and we want to get them dry. So here's the drying patio. You can see two other batches of beans drying up there as well. Those ones were processed with the washed method. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But for right now, here is the natural. And then we rake them out in order to encourage uniform drying. And the natural coffee takes a while to dry because that skin holds on to moisture. So it can be anywhere between one week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on the temperature, the environment, how like humid or rainy it is. But this is what they look like at the very beginning. Again, the skins are pretty fragile, so Craig has to be very gentle with them so as not to, to rip open any of those coffee cherries. Good job, Craig. <laughs> so after a few days, this is what they look like. You can tell they've dried up, shriveled up a little bit. They've also hardened up. Um, they still have probably over a week to go, but this is what they look like after they've dried a bit. And that is the natural extended 72 hour anaerobic fermentation. We can also do an extended fermentation with a washed coffee. So these cherries were just picked and with the washed process, we wanna take the outer layer of the cherry off, the skin. So with the natural, we left it on. With the washed, we wanna take it off. So that's what this machine does. It basically squeezes out the inside of the coffee cherry and takes off the outside layer. So that's what this pile is here. And this is what is on the inside. It is the good beans. So the beans have a layer of parchment and then a layer of the sugar uh, and the basically the coffee fruit on them at this point. And then we take our yeast again, same activated yeast, and we put it in a bag again and let it do its thing. You can see this one is bubbling as well. And the main difference here again is that the natural coffee had the skins on, this washed coffee has the skins off. But aside from the difference in the skins, the process is relatively the same because we're doing the anaerobic fermentation for this coffee as well. So we cut the bag open, let all of the juices, yeast, bacteria, debris drain out. We rinse it and we can rinse this one a little bit more vigorously than the natural because this doesn't have the skins that we have to keep intact. So we're able to jostle it around a little bit more, rinse it a little bit more thoroughly. So washed coffees are generally, generally have a more clean flavor. So that's what it looks like when it's been rinsed. And then we take it to the drying bed and rake it out and let it dry as well. A washed coffee will dry in faster amount of time than the natural because it doesn't have that skin layer holding on to so much moisture. But we still rake it out to get an even dry. Most coffee does not undergo extended fermentation. So let's take a look at a washed processed coffee that doesn't go through an extended fermentation. This is much more traditional. So because it's washed, we still have to get the outer skin off of the bean. So again, it goes through this machine after being picking to remove the skin from the inner layers of the coffee fruit. Because we're not doing an extended fermentation, we don't need to create a new environment. We don't need to put it into a bag or create an anaerobic environment for it. So we just cover it with water. This wheelbarrow doesn't have holes in it, so it will hold the water. And even though this coffee won't go through an extended fermentation, it does go through a very brief fermentation. We put a little bit of extra yeast to help with this very short, approximately 12 hour fermentation process, but you don't actually have to do this because there is enough yeast and bacteria in the air and on the skin of the beans that it'll do it itself. 
Right now it's kind of cold, so we're giving it a little extra yeast to help it along. And then we let it sit for about 12 hours. And this is what happens. You can see the bubbles. So the yeast and bacteria have been hard at work eating the sugars off of these beans. And really the purpose of this isn't to give it a different flavor like the extended fermentation. This is just to remove that layer of sticky uh, sugar. And then we wash it and we put it out on the patio to dry. So this is the traditional washed coffee without the extended fermentation. And over there you can see the washed coffee with the extended fermentation. So you can see the difference in color right off the bat. That's the extended ferment. That's the regular extended ferment, regular extended ferment. And then that's our extended ferment natural. After the coffee dries on the patio, we bring it to a dry mill. We don't have the equipment to do that here, but there's one just up the road. So what that happens at the dry mill is that it takes off all the outer layers from the coffee. So these are the coffee beans after the parchment has come off from the washed coffees or the skins and everything have come off from the natural coffees. Then it goes through this gravity table, which basically sorts the coffee beans by size. Different sized beans are generally different quality. And so you can get, um, so they have to be separated so you can get different prices for the different sizes. This is the drying bed over at the dry mill. And this is their beautiful view. Over there is, that's just where the parchment goes. So that's discarded parchment. Then the coffee goes on a gravity table here, which basically shakes it and separates the good quality beans from any debris, the uh, more dense beans from the less dense beans that may have undergone uh, any sort of damage. You can see it kind of just shakes and it's also very loud but the more dense beans actually settle at the top and that is the higher quality. And then the less dense beans settle towards the bottom, closer to the bottom of the screen on the right side. At this point, these green beans are ready to roast, then brew, and ultimately enjoy. That is a good cup of coffee.